Vanguard Zombie, Shinonuma Easter Egg Guide. Super detailed and easy for solo and co-op. I highly recommend using Frost Blast as your artifact. First thing you want to do is follow the prompts on screen to search the dig site. You're going to be opening up through the comms room or storage, and then buying a door in either of those areas to take you to the dig site. If you've walked up to that dig site, we can begin with the first steps. Firstly, we're going to need to find three cipher circles. First is going to be under spawn in the dormitory on this table right here. Go ahead and pick that up. Second cipher wheel is on this table right in front of the pack a punch at the dig site. The last one is in the doctor's quarters. And once you open this area, we're here for can I make a comment about this monolith on this tree? We'll be dealing with that in a moment. Make your way into the hut in the doctor's quarters and make your way to this back room where the max ammo box is. And right in the corner on this table, you should notice the third cipher wheel. Now you've got those three parts. Make your way to wave five and stand in front of the monolith and kill a boom shrine in front of it. As you can see, it will remove the spell from the monolith. And we can insert those wheel parts that we just picked up. Now there is a puzzle to solve with this, but we'll get back to it in a moment as we now need to go ahead and work on the Wonderwaffer DG2 parts. Now you can get these two parts in any order, but I'm going to start with the easier one, which is by opening up past the flogger and into the fishing hut. As soon as you open the door into that, take a right and you will find the weapon barrel on the shelf here. Pick it up and make your way to the comm room exterior and right where you see here, you'll want to place that weapon barrel down in this strange machine that gives you a prompt to insert it. Once you've done that, open up inside the comm room, on left past the perk and behind the door, you should see a radio with a prompt to check it. Once you've done that, end the round next to the box we inserted the weapon barrel in and you will have seen lightning spark into the machine. After a few moments, you'll see a defend the radio tower prompt where you have to defend the tower from being attacked by zombies. You'll have boom shriers, normal zombies and storm kriegers, which is a really early round to get these on. Definitely make sure you're prepared. A shotgun is definitely viable for this Easter egg. As you can see, I'm using the combat shotgun here. After a while, your screen will flash and you'll be able to pick up the weapon barrel. Very important, once you've picked up that weapon barrel, go back into the comm room, go to that radio, and you should be able to pick up a charged vacuum tube. From here, you want to make your way to the other room inside the comm room, and on a table, you will see an electrical fuse part. Pick that up and then open your way to the storage hut. Once you're inside, go ahead and activate this trap, which will cost a thousand points, and you'll see shortly after that the trap will malfunction. The trap is broken, and you need to insert the fuse that you just picked up. Once you've inserted the fuse back in, the trap will automatically turn back on, and you need to get a set amount of zombie kills in the trap till the fuse is fully charged and it powers the second power cell that is on the wonder weapon bench just to the right which has the wonder waffer on. You usually get a quote when this is complete and you'll physically see both cells on the build table. Now the last part we can't get till round 15. Let's head back to that monolith and that cipher puzzle that we now need to solve. Now around the map there are going to be three symbols on a piece of paper that are going to spawn in the exact same place every game but the symbols change every game. First symbol location we'll show you is inside of the dig site on the buildable bench. You'll be able to see this piece of paper with a symbol. Take a picture or note that down. Second location is going to be inside of the comm room opposite the mystery box location on a table and it should be clear as day. Again, take a picture or write it down. And the third location is going to be on a table in the main hut by the door that leads you to storage and you need to shoot it as it's covered by a set of papers. Once you've shot it, you should be able to see all three. Note that down. Inside the doctor's quarters to the right of the perk, there is a table with a sheet on it. If you look at it, you will hear a quote, but it's only revealing half of the symbols with a mention about there being disappearing ink. In order to get the full paper to be displayed, you need to throw a flammable piece of equipment like a Molotov or a Fermite. I have a nice easy cheat sheet for you so you don't have to do this in your game, but this is what the page will look like. As you can see, there are 15 different Japanese kanji symbols which correlate to a symbol on this piece of paper. Now, if you noted down or took pictures of all three of your symbols, all you need to do is look at the symbols that you found. See that each symbol equals another symbol. So if I show you, for example, in my game, I had these three symbols and as you can see I edited a photo I took on my iPhone where I drew an arrow to which three symbols I had. So I had these bottom two on the first column and then this middle one in the second column. Now the symbols on the cipher key match the symbols that are going to be on the right that match your kanji symbols. Once you've got the noted down like I do just go over to the cipher wheel match them up so the symbols are aligned with 12 o'clock. If you're playing solo when you interact with this the zombies will ignore you so this is really good you can spend as much time as you want on this. With the three symbols that you've matched up, they are only ever going to appear on one of each of the circles, so you won't get any repeats. It should be super simple. As you see, these were the three symbols in my game. They equated to this, so I matched them up just like this, and if you've got it correct, then the monolith should transform, and if you got it wrong, you can just keep trying as much as you want. If you've inputted the code correctly, we can move on to the next step with this, but we still need the Wonder Waffer, so we need to go to round 15. At this point, I would just make sure you're building up your points
points, you're buying all the perks, you're getting your loadout upgraded and have some money saved for if you're getting the Wonder Wofford to upgrade that later. Anyway, skipping to round 15 now, Zabala the Deceiver spawns in and you need to get her to use her electric attack by this machine opposite the door out to storage in the main hut. Now she is quite a dangerous enemy, so I recommend you get to the end of the round. Just keep running around this section, hoping that she respawns near it. As long as you're near it, she will either respawn and electrical attack it or she will use her electric attack directly on the machine and she needs to do that about three times again paying attention to the in-game quotes you will know when it's completed because you'll get a prompt to pick up the cell that's just to the right of the machine here now you have all three cells you can now build the wonder Waffle dg2 at the buildable bench in the storage hut at this point as well you've probably racked up quite a few of the covenant hearts so definitely spend them Ask the flogger to upgrade your artifact it's really really important if the wonder Waffle, make your way back to the doctor's quarters and if you're playing co-op each player will have to interact with one of these but if you're in solo you only need to interact with one of these redstones on the edge of doctor's quarters with a prompt to start the ceremony it's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of zombies you're going to have boom shriers and storm kriegers spawning but the important thing is there are going to be zombies spawning with a blue mist to them that you need to kill with the wonder Waffer. now this step is quite tricky and it might take you a few attempts to do this but i think the step is a combination of time where you have a certain amount of time to do this as well as damage that can be taken the slab you use to activate this ceremony you just need to be constantly looking out to kill these blue listed zombies and i think you need to kill them by the monolith as well if you come across against any storm creakers use the wonder wolf because it is a one hit kill when pack a punched just try your very best to kill everything as quickly as possible if you need to go ahead drop your boss blast as it freezes the zombies in place near the monolith and you can then use the wonder Waffer. there is an ammo box in this room if you need to use it if you failed you hear a quote saying do not give up the monument will soon be ready again and you'll have to go to the next round to start it again I definitely recommend you get yourself some equipment some grenades and also some ammo for that next round if you failed and during this step you'll be able to track your progress by how many blue lights there are connecting to each of the ceremonies you start off with four you get down to one and you're still going you're very very close to completing the step just keep going keep killing zombies on the island that the monolith is on if done successfully you'll hear a quote saying the monument is ready brace yourself Syraxis. there'll be a little in-game moment before we can move on to the next step which we need to get zombie blood and in order to do that we're going to need to hoard zombies up past the flogger activate the flogger trap and then let them run through and as you can see their bodies are flung towards this broken perk fountain once enough bodies have filled this up there'll be a prompt where you'll be able to drink the blood and now you'll be in zombies blood notice you'll be able to run a lot quicker and we have two things we need to do in zombies blood firstly you're going to be looking for a red orb this can spawn under the spawn room by the og mystery box location in this corner if it's not there it can also be up in the spawn room it will always be somewhere in the middle of the map whilst in zombies blood you're going to need to follow this orb you're going to have a ton of boom shrines spawning as you're doing this depending on where you found the orb it will lead you into the back of the fishing hut where you'll be able to pick up that mirror piece but again you need to be in zombies blood if it runs out you're going to need to get more bodies by the flogger trap drink it again to pick up that mirror piece and if you found it in the spawn room it's going to be outside of the hut in doctor's quarters just to the left if you found it somewhere different again just make sure to follow it and don't lose it because it's going to lead you to a hut where you'll be able to pick up that first mirror piece you're going to need to get kills again to be able to drink so we can get the second mirror piece under the spawn room in the main hut you're going to see this map usually it's empty but when you drink zombie blood and look at the map you'll see an x which marks the spot and this is where you need to go in order to find the second mirror part but as you can see x marks the spot in storage huts if we go over there in zombie blood and look at the ceiling we can see the mirror part up there and we can shoot it down it won't always be here it can spawn in other huts so definitely check this map before you go looking for this second mirror piece once you've got both parts of the mirror make sure you've got all your perks all the covenants you want and make your way back to the dig site place the mirror fragments down and now you'll get a prompt to charge up these podiums and again if you're on solo there's only one but if you're playing in co-op there's going to be multiple of these get to the end of the round and then press your prompt to energize the podium and for each player their orb will float up in the sky before disappearing to one of the four huts again you want to watch where this orb goes because again in co-op each one can go to each of the four areas but for me it went to the storage hut and again you're going to be looking out the map to shoot the orb a total of three times this will be for each player for each area so as you can see the second one it went up to this tree it's a really sneaky spot and then the third one went just out the map here in this hut so again i'm using a shotgun so i'm using the wonder buffer for that long range but once you've shot each orb three times it will go back to the dig site once all the orbs are back here you will be prompted to start the boss fight by summoning the echo on the podium this will spawn in seraxis with a little in-game cutscene. but once this is over the boss fight begins and it's broken down into three stages you can't directly 
directly attack Zaraxxus yet, as you're going to need to use the Wonder Waffer to kill these zombies with the blue mist on them. But you have to kill them on the bottom level of the dig site. It's essentially the same level of ground as the podium with the mirror fragments. So just keep training around. As soon as you see some zombies with the blue mist, kill them with the Wonder Waffer. Obviously, take out any of the Boom Shriers, the Storm Kriegers as well that get in your way. Save the Wonder Waffer to kill only the zombies with blue mist when they're on the lower platform. And once you've done that enough times, mirrors will spawn a massive bubble, which you need to be in, as well as Seraxis, in order to do damage to her. So just wait until she spawns inside of the bubble, and then you'll be able to do direct damage to her. You just want to be constantly firing at her until she's stunned, and then just keep going. If you fail the step like you see here, you will just get a max ammo, and you have to repeat everything we've just done. Once we get the bubble back, again, stun her, and this is when I would use my artifact, and then just pump a load of shots into her head, and once you've done enough, she'll be immune. Bubble will disappear, spawning you a max ammo, full armor, and some points. We're now onto the second phase. And this time, instead of killing zombies with blue mist, we're killing the boom shriers with blue mist. Again, you want to be killing them on that bottom platform. You can't be killing them up above. They have to be on the bottom platform near the mirrors. Once you've killed enough, the mirrors will spawn the blue orb again. And once the Raxus is inside, I pop down my artifact and then go ahead and pump a load of shots into her face. As you see, she'll be stunned and you can just keep going. And as soon as you see immune you've done enough damage and again you'll get another round of max ammo full armor and points and for this third and final phase storm kriegers are going to be the ones that you need to kill with the wonder waffer now if you've got this pack a punch they are a one shot kill so again you're gonna have to let them spawn into the map fall down to this bottom platform on the same ground level as the mirrors and just keep killing them until you get that third bubble once it spawns wait for seraxis to spawn in use your artifact and then just pump a load of shots into her again and you should have completed the easter egg my friends you'll hear her scream she'll disappear and then you'll get the end cut scene a bunch of rewards and that's it if you found the video useful please leave a like rating subscribe for more zombie tutorials like this feel free to use the comment section to find some players if you want some help in co-op